All right, back to real life quadratic equations. The last two days, it was all about figuring out how long is something in the air. And to do that, you have to find the x-intercept because when it's not in the air anymore, that means it's on the ground. And when it's on the ground, it has a height of zero. And height is y. So if y equals zero, that means x is the x-intercept. So t was x in these problems for time. And how much time went by until that parabola came back down and hit the x-axis. That's how you figured out how long something was in the air. Well, what else is important is also figuring out how high this object actually went. All right, that may be just as, if not more important, than knowing how long was it in the air for total. So here's an example that I've drawn. Imagine somebody throws a ball straight up in the air. So when they release the ball, their hand will be approximately six feet above the ground. That's why I gave H the number of six feet. Now let's say this ball is traveling at 128 feet per second when it leaves the person's hand. As it goes up, it's going to be slowing down and slowing down and slowing down until it reaches as high as it's going to go. And then it'll start coming back down real slow and speed up as it comes back down. And it'll be a nice U-shaped upside down parabola. So if we want to know how high did this ball go, we're going to have to find the vertex. All right, because if our graph is going to look like this, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, it would look something like that. 6 is the y-intercept. All right, that's the starting point. And we're not really worried about the part of the parabola that's in the negative territory because that's not very realistic in this particular problem. We just want to know the first quadrant. So you're starting at up 6, the ball's going up to where, and then it's coming back down. So it's actually going to take a little bit longer to come back down to the ground than it took to get up to its maximum height because it got a six feet head start. And then when it's coming back down, when it gets back to six feet above the ground right here, that would take the same amount of time that it took to leave the person's hand to get to its maximum height and then back down to six feet above the ground. That's the same amount of time. So the ball, say it takes four seconds to get up to its maximum height. It's gonna take four seconds to come back down to six feet above the ground and then a split second longer to actually hit the ground. So it's going to take a little bit longer on the way down to hit the ground than it took on the way up to reach its maximum. All right, so what is that maximum? Well, let's set up the equation. It's negative 16t squared, because that's gravity, that doesn't change, plus 128t. All right, yesterday all these were minus signs because we are dealing with problems of something starting in the air and just coming down. Now we're starting and going up. So now that we're going up, our velocity is positive as opposed to negative yesterday when the object was going down. And then we add six because we're getting a six feet head start. That's our y-intercept. Now we just have to find the vertex for this. So to do that, remember the vertex is a point at the top of the parabola. So it's that point right there. And a point, when you describe a point, it's always an ordered pair, an x and a y coordinate. So we need two numbers. Only one of them is gonna tell us how high the ball actually went. And that's the y coordinate. The x coordinate is still time. So t and h for our axes this point right here, the first number is going to tell us how long it took to get to that maximum height. And the second number in our ordered pair is going to tell us what that height was. So let's figure out what that is now. To figure out t, or x, in this case it's t, remember it's the negative of b over 2a. So the negative of b over 2a. And b is 128. A is negative 16, and when we double A, you get negative 32. So we have 128, and that's negative because it's the negative of 128 over negative 32. So we substituted in 128 for B because that's our 128 value, and it's negative. 
and then a was negative 16, and when we double it, we get negative 32, and a negative divided by a negative is a positive, and 32 just happens to go into 128, a nice even four times. So it actually takes four seconds. This ball is going to be going up, 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 and up for four seconds, which is pretty long. So 128 feet per second, that might be a little faster than a human can throw a ball, but maybe not. All right, so it took four seconds to get to its maximum height, but if the question is, what is that height, then we have to substitute four back into the equation and solve for it. So I'll do that over to the side here. I'll separate my slate. So now this part over here will be finding the maximum height. So it'll be negative 16 times four squared plus 128 times four plus six. So this is gonna be a big number. All right, four squared is 16 and 16 times 16 is 256, but it's a negative. 256. All right, because 4 squared is 16, 16 times 16 is 256, but a negative times a positive is a negative. And then 4 times 128, something doesn't look right here, but let's see how this works out. 4 times 128, yeah, this is right, is 400, and then 4 times 28, I would do 4 times 30 in my head, which is 120. But I'm going to subtract 8 from that because I'm actually doing 4 times 28. So every time I multiply by 30, I'm adding 2 more on to my answer than I should. So 4 times 30 is 120, but 4 times 28 is 112, 8 less than that. All right, so we've got 400 plus 112, that's 512 plus 6. And then it's just simple adding and subtracting. Now, 512 is twice as much as 256. So when you add 512 to negative 256, the first half gets you back to zero. And then you go all the way up to 256 above zero. So it's 256 plus 6, which is 262 feet. So our y-coordinate of our vertex is 262. What that point is telling you is four seconds it took for this ball to get to its maximum height of 262 feet. Now, you guys are in luck. On the homework tonight, the book is out of story problems or just didn't do any story problems involving vertex. However, there are problems that says just find the vertex. So you're going to be doing all this. You're going to be finding the vertex. You're going to be using negative b over 2a to find the x-coordinate and then substituting that in to find the y-coordinate, and that'll be your vertex. Now on a test problems, it might be more specific, and it might say how long did it take you to get to your maximum height, and the answer then is not 4, 262. It's just 4. Or it might say how high did it go, and then it's just 262. So you have to find the vertex and then know what number to use. Are you using the 4 or are you using the 262? 4 would be seconds, time, 262 would be h, height. So this really isn't anything new. We've done vertex now a few times. So hopefully you guys won't have too much trouble with Thursday's work.